Rami X Pepper in a video. Hope you guys all enjoyed today's video. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button as always. Share the video to a friend who likes what ifs or just anime content in general. And with that being said, we can now begin the video. Naruto Uzumaki. Some say he's the child of prophecy. Others say he's a mass murderer. And others People who think beyond the meta. Ambu, Joni, high-ranking officials of the Hidden Leaf Village. They believe that Naruto is the future fifth Hokage of the Hidden Leaf Village. And with that, we can begin. What if Naruto was an Ambu? Naruto's life to this point has been far from easy. He has been bullied, beaten, mugged, hurt, and in all forms, beaten by society. The very society that he has now been convinced to protect. We take the story of Naruto back to his earlier days, about four years old to be exact in this timeline. Two kids stared at Naruto. Naruto didn't stare back, but he looked at them occasionally, every 20 seconds or so. Eventually, one of the boys that was looking at him caught Naruto's gaze. What I mean by that is one of the boys who we're going to classify as bully number one and bully number two would see Naruto look at them, see Naruto realize that they were looking at him. Now, how, how old are these bullies? Well, to be exact, each of them are 12 years old. This Naruto is four. That's well, about three times his age. Both of them would walk up to Naruto. One had a stick in his hand, the other a few rocks that he found near the lakeside. And as you can imagine, things didn't end well for Naruto. All Naruto had to do was look at them and, well, that gave them enough reason to beat him. And beat him, they did. Bully number one threw multiple rocks at him. Every second that he got, every chance that he got to throw another rock, he did. And, well, he didn't miss. Bully number two had a stick, which he slapped Naruto with a multitude of times in various places around his body. His shoulders, his arms, his chest, his face even. Bully number two, the one with the stick, cut Naruto so hard with the stick that it left a scar on his face. Although, all Naruto saw was red. And that red, the blood that he saw dripping down his face, it made him shed a tear. It hurt so bad it stung. And so he stood to his legs and standing up on two feet, he looked at both bully one and bully two. And he said nothing, did nothing, but they could see he was in pain. They could see that they did exactly what they wanted to do. They hurt the Jinjuriki, they hurt the beast, the demon, but, but it didn't matter. It was almost as if things weren't over. It was almost as if the job wasn't done. Because even though they could say that they did that, Naruto now stood before them as if he was a god. As if he were going to endure anything that they gave him. But it would be then that the unexpected happened. Kakashi Hatake and Itachi Uchiha would stumble across this as they watched carefully. They watched as bully number one, who had done nothing but throw rocks at Naruto, walked up to the boy, picking him up by his collar. This was easy for the 12 year old. It was like carrying a baby. They watched as bully number one punched Naruto in his face. They watched Naruto say nothing, but what they could see were 
were his eyes. Naruto's eyes didn't sink, they didn't falter, they didn't move. They stayed looking at bully number one. It didn't matter how hard he had been beaten. They could see it. They could see the hatred in his eyes, the anger, yet also the pacifism. And, well, isn't that the perfect trait of it all, Boo? Someone who can be killer, yet calm. Someone who can be being beaten to a pulp, yet not utter a word. Someone who would remain loyal to their village no matter what is thrown at them. Even if the people of their own village despise them. Even if the people of their own village see their work as obsolete, unneeded, unnecessary. They still fight, they still stand, and they say nothing and do their job. Is that not what an Ambu is? Of course, not in the literal sense. An Ambu is, well, you should all know. But morally, ethically speaking, personality speaking, it all lined up. Kakashi and Itachi would look at each other as they realized they could not let this drag on any longer. Quickly making work of bully number one and number two. No, that does not mean that they killed them. Uh, that would not happen. There's no reason for that to happen. And, well, yeah. With that, though, Naruto was now on the ground, but first, looking up at Itachi and Kakashi. He still said nothing, but it was visible that he was shaking. And his face was still damp from the tears that just dried. Kikashi and Itachi outstretched their hands to Naruto, raising him up to his feet. Naruto began to form the words to say, Thank you. As Itachi and Kikashi smiled. Yeah. Don't sweat it, kid. But we have a question. The one to ask this question was none other than Naruto's father's very own student, Kakashi Hatake. Would you, would you like to join the Ombu? What's, what's the Ombu? So, there are Geni, Chunin, Joni, Special Joni, Ombu, and the Hokage. The Ambu are a tier above the Jonin. Let's just say if the Jonin are the good cops, the Ambu are the bad cops. Kakashi, what are you saying? You're gonna scare the kid. You can't talk like that. You have to speak of Ambu better than that. What he means, Naruto, is that well, <sighs> the Ambu are the ones who do the dirty work, whilst the Jonin do the good work. They go on missions for the village, while the Ambu go on secret missions for the village. Jonin gather intel, while the Ambu, well, attack them. You see, the Ambu are the most high-ranking force that this village has. And me and Itachi, we lead one of the best platoons, if not the best. Uh, okay. Um, wait, uh, what's, what's your name? My name's Itachi Uchiha, and this, the one who freaked you out about being bad cops, well, his name is Kakashi Hatake. He copies people's jutsus. I mimic them. Anyways. <laughs> well, wait a minute. How, how did you, um... How did I what? How did you know my name? What? You called me Naruto and that's my name. How did you know it? 
Oh. Uh. Well. I can explain that all later. But what did you think of my offer? Well. Are, are you two Ombu? Yeah. Sure are. We are the two youngest captains in the Ombu. And on top of that, we happen to be some pretty good teachers. Does, does that mean that you can make me strong like you guys are? It means that we can make you even more than that, Naruto. We can make you have true power. Not just physically, but mentally too. Uh, you're using a lot of big words. I don't understand all of them, but... Um... Sure, why not? I'll become an Ambu. I'll do it, I'll do it, I swear I'll be an Ambu! I'll make sure that, 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 um, that, that nobody gets bullied like that. And, um, I'll do the dirty work. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll do everything. I will carry the burden. I will be the best. I swear it. I swear it. Itachi, Kakashi, copy guy and mimic guy. I, 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 I. Naruto's eyes got heavy. And he ended up passing out on the floor. Kakashi raised him up on his back. And Itachi and Kakashi were now walking to the Hokage office. They would rest Naruto outside of the office. As they entered, Haruzen was there to meet them with a smile visible on his face. To what do I owe this visit? Itachi, Kakashi, did you finish the mission? Yes. We finished it successfully. We retrieved exactly what you wanted. The scroll that we had lost during the war all those years ago. The stone no longer has possession of it. And we have avenged our former comrades. Good, good. Did you get intel on the battle at the harbor? The battle at the harbor is an A-rank mission now. We'll need about at least two Jonin, as it could easily upscale that. It's a potential SS rank. SS? You know we don't use that system anymore, Kakashi. E yeah, but trust me. With the intel I learned on it, it easily should be considered that and not just an S rank mission. Now then, why exactly are you two here, if you don't mind me asking? I always love a visit from you. You, of course, Kakashi and Itachi. But why so soon? You barely completed the mission. Don't you want some time to relax? Why come to me immediately? I have so many questions, yet so little answers. Sorry, Lord Third, Itachi said, lightly bowing to the Hokage. <laughs> it's okay, I don't need a bow. I'm just curious. What's the matter? Well, me and Itachi were wondering if we could train Naruto Uzumaki, the Jinjuriki of the Nine Tails, and son of the fourth Okage, Minato Namikaze. What? Why exactly would you train him? For what? To protect himself? It is clear to us now, only being in the village for a day since coming back from our mission, that Naruto Uzumaki is at danger. At danger? Here in his own village? No. Haruzen, I'm going to be blunt with you, okay? Sure thing, Itachi. Go on. You don't see the things that we see. Your eyes sit at the top of this tower day in and day out. When you come out, you go to parades. You eat at the local stores. But when we go out, we walk the streets. We go through the alleys. 
we cut the corners, okay? We see things that you couldn't possibly see. We saw Naruto getting beaten by two kids who had to be twice his age at the very least. Actually, they look to be about 12 and we know Naruto's four. So tell me exactly why we would keep Naruto in the streets of the Leaf Village with no proper training. Yes, but he's Minato's son. Minato would never want him to train as an Anbu. I never said training him as an Anbu, but if that's what he needs to do to become the best him possible, then it's what he's gonna do. No, it's not. You do not order me around, Itachi. Lord Third. Itachi has a point here. <sighs> Maybe it was a little blunt of us to come in here demanding things like demanding you to allow us to train Naruto but Lord Third we're serious about this we can't leave Naruto on the streets of the Leaf Village he will grow up not only an orphan but someone who was undervalued underappreciated by his village and if you expect the Jinjuriki to have any plans of being a part of our village when he has a mind of his own, when he's an adult, when he can make his own decisions, you'll be wrong. Because when Naruto's, what, 12, 11, 13, 14, 15, he'll look at his life, he'll look at his cards, the cards that he was dealt by you. Because when two people came trying to give Naruto the life that he has never had, they were denied. So you can turn us away, but we swear it, Haruzen. We do this only for your best interest. As our Hokage, we serve you. And so if you don't see this as the best possible outcome, for the Jinjuriki to love the people of the Leaf Village after how much hate he has experienced with only four years on this earth? Then you'd be mistaken. Haruzen paused. You, you make a good point, Itachi. So what do you say? I'm an adult, above 18 actually, which means legally, I could adopt Naruto, right? You're talking about adopting the kid now? Where did this come from? How do you expect the kid to have a good life? I'm just gonna train him and leave him on the streets every day, alone in his apartment. I don't know about you, but that doesn't sound like a really good life to raise a kid in. Even if you're just training him. Mm. I suppose you're right about that. I have to stick things by the council first. Haruzen. Yes, Hatake. You know the council won't want a student of Lord Fourth training his son. You know they won't want me to train the Jinjuriki. You know they'll want Donzo to do it, an Ambu, a root Ambu. You're right. Under the word of the third Hokage of the Hidden Leaf Village, I, Haruzen Saratobi, give you the authority to raise the Jinjuriki of this village, Uzumaki Naruto, son of the fourth Hokage. With that comes responsibility that only somebody of your caliber can handle. You are to adopt the boy within two weeks from now. If you are unsuccessful, 
you will have no part in his life, and he will be raised on the streets of the Leaf Village. Uh, understood, Lord Third. Thank you. Of course. No problem. With that, Kakashi would be successful in adopting Naruto about a week later, as he would now train Naruto with Itachi Uchiha. We now have a time skip of three years, which would officially make Naruto seven years old to date. With that being said, this seven-year-old Naruto is stronger than his 12-year-old counterpart. Now, how strong does that exactly make him? Well, easily on the level of Chunin and Jonin. And although he might not have control of the Kyuubi's chakra at this current time, he sure does stack up to his canon counterpart, even when, well, at this point, he was up to five years older. So, to be clear here, this seven-year-old Naruto is the strongest 12-year-old counterpart and has things that his 12-year-old counterpart didn't have. This Naruto has control over wind style already and has amazing Kenjutsu skills. As good as a young Itachi in the words of Itachi himself. This Naruto is driven by purpose. He is driven by Itachi and Kakashi, and he loves them very much. Itachi and Kakashi have kind of assumed father roles for Naruto. Well, in a way. Kakashi's kind of like Naruto's father in this timeline, and Itachi's like his big older brother or uncle. Now, with that being said, what else does this Naruto have? Well, think of him as being the perfect ninja. He has compassion, yet he always gets the job done. And he has made his own moral compass, which is to protect the Hidden Leaf Village by all means necessary. Whatever it means, whatever it takes. But the one thing that he will never do is turn his back on a comrade. No matter how strong, his will is to protect the Leaf Village. He will never, ever abandon one of his own. Because in the words of Kakashi Hatake, those who would abandon their comrades are nothing more than scum. With that being said, Naruto at this point is not yet eligible to enter into the Academy, but he would. He would pass the Academy of Flying Colors, as this Naruto in this timeline has been taught by Kakashi and Itachi, and I see no reason why within three years they wouldn't be able to teach him how to control wind style, but not only that, but also how to control his own chakra. Meaning that he can wall run, water run, and tree walk. So, yeah, uh, he has full control over his chakra, and he would easily create a shadow club. With that being said, he would pass the Academy in his first year, making him about eight years old, which is around the time that Sasuke enters the academy. Another fact, it's around the time that the Uchiha massacre happens. And in this timeline, Itachi doesn't massacre the clan when Sasuke and Naruto are eight years old, which means that it has not yet happened and it might not even happen. Who knows? With that being said, this Naruto actually has an okay relationship with Sasuke. And they even see each other as rivals, which is a healthy rivalry for Naruto to have. It's not toxic, and it motivates him to get stronger every day. And although he knows he is leagues, and I mean leagues, above Sasuke, Itachi tells him day in and day out that Sasuke will continue to try to catch up to his level. And so if Naruto doesn't work just as hard to stay on top, then Sasuke will work harder to be there, to be where Naruto to get stronger than him. This motivates Naruto every day and causes him to work even harder for what he has, for the strength he has been given. He thanks Itachi and Kakashi always. He has been taught things unimaginable for a kid his age. And he's even ready to go on his first Ombu mission. His first Ombu mission was actually quite simple. They were to go into a foreign land a foreign village that had just been created. 
Haruzin had seen it as a chance to create a friendship between the Leaf and the village that would be known as the Land of Strawberries. A up-and-coming land which had just been created and had already seemed to amass a great amount of people and ninja to protect it. Naruto, Itachi, Kakashi, and 12 other Anbu would be sent on the mission. They would all take different parts of the city. The city that was known as Barry, and the land of strawberries, closely outside of the Hidden Leaf Village. If they needed backup, it wouldn't be a problem. With that being said, the ninja there thought it was suspicious to see so many Anbu in their village. It didn't just look like an Anbu was passing through. It looked like a threat, a threat to their village. And so, with no questions asked, no warning, no heads up, Anbu started to fall like flies. Anbu were getting cut down rapidly, and Naruto froze. It had been the first time that he had seen someone die ever, and he didn't know what to do. Was he supposed to call for help, run, hold on to Itachi or Kakashi's hand? His hand was placed firmly on his sword. Naruto held it tight, whilst the rest of his body shook with fear. Tremoring, he watched blood spill right in front of his face. As the ninja ran right by him, until stopping at him was one ninja. The ninja held a katana at his back, but his fists were the only thing bloody. On his fist were brass knuckles, which Naruto assumed he used to, well, to batter an Anbu. These were the men that Naruto went to war with, the people that he would lay his life out for, and they were being killed before his eyes as if they were chickens to slaughter. Naruto grabbed on tightly to his blade as he readied for self with, well, with all he had. And he readied himself for the battle that was to ensue between him and this man. You can call me Lo-Fi, but my real name is Luminara Gananu. I'll just call you Luminara. Tough talk for someone that looks quite young to be an Anbu. I assume you're the weakest link here? Naruto said nothing. It was like that time. Just like that time, when he was four years old and he said nothing. But this time, this time things were different. He had the power to change, to truly change things. And so he drew his blade. So you're gonna make the first move then. No, you're the only one who's moving. Luminaro. Hey, just call me Lo-Fi and cut it out with speaking in tongues. I'm a big guy. I don't have the biggest brain. So, you gotta dumb it down for me. What exactly do you mean, I already made a move? I've been sitting still this entire time. Actually, I haven't even moved a muscle. That's the point. You haven't moved. Naruto zipped by Luminara, cutting his arm clean off. <laughs> what's, what's, what is this? Why can't I move? What's happened to my arm? I cut your arm clean off, you moron. Can't you see the blood on my blade? You and your men. He didn't even give us a chance to broker peace with this village. It's a shame. You killed the people that I would lay my life out for. And in return. Yeah, yeah, now I must die. 
Don't give me the whole hero speech like you're all mighty and noble. The Ambu of the Leaf Village are corrupt. Have you heard of Root? They killed my brother in cold blood. All because he called them out for their suspicions. He called them out because they were corrupt. He knew things about Donzo Shimura, that big old leader of theirs. But the Leaf Village doesn't even know. So spare me with the bullshit hero story. Because I'm not going to buy it. Oh, and your friends. They're going to die here. We have twice the manpower. Twice the body. Twice the army. Twice the military. Twice the strength we're gonna murder them so you can take my life you little brat <laughs> because I know it means half as much to you <laughs> you're all about protecting your noble village when you fail to look in front of you you keep looking at this whole bigger picture thing <laughs> All of you, Ambu, stuck in your ways. Stuck with your moral compass. That usually isn't even true justice. The point is, look in front of you. You walked into a village. No questions asked and the people here saw you as a threat. Because of that stupid mask you're wearing. It's not us, it's you. The sooner that you realize that, Naruto, the sooner you'll understand. Uh, how do you know my name? Tch. It's not hard to hear about the young upstart. The boy who passed the academy within only a year and has gone on to become an Ambu. They say that you're the next... Ah, I won't flatter. If you don't know, you don't know. Say it! Tell me! What do they say? They say that you will be the future Hokage of the Hidden Leaf Village. What? Really? Yes. But judging off the fact that you have even... Well, you have even the slightest screw. Huh? W where'd you go? The next time you tell me I haven't even the slightest clue, please try to say it with a straight tongue. Uh, uh, I can't lose my tongue. Uh, uh, what's happening to me? Can't you see? The whole time I was going on asking questions about my legend, my name. I was gathering ninja wire in my pocket, which is now attached to your stupid tongue. Now not only can you use your right arm, you can't use your mouth to speak. Not clearly, anyway. Let me go now! Let me go! I'm not gonna let you go just cause you asked. My dream is to lead this village to a new era. An era of peace. And if you think I can't be Hokage, then that's on you. Because I'm young and you're old. Naruto, without a second thought, cut the head from the ninja that had already claimed one of the lives of his very comrades that he swore to protect. It would be then that Naruto did something inhumane. Not because of the morality of what he did, but rather because of the skill and the strength that he displayed. Naruto and Kakashi had been fighting two Ambu, who had actually been giving them a run for their money, as the rest of their squad had been all but killed. Luminara was right. They were outnumbered, outmanned, and outstrength. And Naruto? Well, Naruto showed up when the lights were brightest on the biggest stage. And he delivered. 
He grabbed Luminaru's katana, and he went on to make a name for himself as the strongest child the leaf has ever seen. Naruto jumped into the air, and without even needing any hand signs, he gathered up enough wind in his lungs to blow away an entire cabin. He sent the wind down on the men who attacked his comrades, the only comrades he had left. Well, the only comrades he had left standing. Itachi and Kakashi. This wind was enough to knock Itachi and Kakashi off their footing, sending them down onto the ground as they watched Naruto descend. He was now surrounded by at least 10 ninja, whilst there were 20 more waiting. Itachi and Kakashi could only hold out for so long. This mission quickly turned even more dangerous than they thought. And, like I said, this was where Naruto made his legend. Three men stood in front of him. Four behind him. One on each side of him. And one was above him trying to slash a blade right into Naruto's back. Naruto dodged. The man's blade implanted itself into the ground as Naruto used his short sword, piercing it right through the man's heart, no questions asked. It would be then that Naruto spoke, quietly yet affirmatively. Sword dance. Murder of the crows. Naruto danced with the men, slashing into them as if it were confetti, as if they were pinatas for him to hit at a birthday party. Naruto quickly cut through all of them, as he then cut through another set of them, and another set, and another set. Ninja were falling down, just as his comrades had. Naruto had found no problems cutting through any of them, until a man grabbed his blade with merely his hand. Naruto tried to move it, but it was to have no avail. With that, he used his katana that he got from Luminaru, trying to cut the man, but his skin was as thick as blades. So it was as if trying to pierce metal with metal. And unless his metal was stronger, it wasn't going to work. Naruto grit his teeth, dropping everything in his hands, as he showed only his fists now. And the man in front of him seemed to be the leader of all of the men. As he spoke to Naruto, with no hate and no love in his voice. You must be the famed prodigy of the Hidden Leaf Village. Uzumaki Naruto, right? Yeah, what about it? My man over there who pissed you off? He had no right to do so. Oh, and let's not forget, he underestimated you. I know just how strong you are. And you will not beat me. <laughs> Heck. Unless the rumors are true. Well, what rumors? They say that not only will you be the future Hokage, but that you possess a skill even greater than that. Well, it's more of an asset than a skill. They see, th well, they say that deep within you is a biju. A biju. Naruto remembered years ago, Itachi told him if he was ever asked if he was a Jinjuriki, he was to strictly say no. And so Naruto did just that, no. I'm not a Jinjuriki. The Jinjuriki is well protected within the Hidden Leaf Village. And although this response seemed rather robotic at best, the man bought it. And with that, he engaged in combat with Naruto. This was most likely to be Naruto's biggest battle yet. The biggest battle of his life. If he failed to defeat the man who stood before him, the leader of the men fighting the leaf? Fighting Itachi, Kakashi, and Naruto? If he failed to beat him timely enough, 
that it would result in Itachi and Kakashi being overwhelmed and killed. And if he could not defeat him entirely, then it would result in his village being, well, possibly annihilated by bigger and greater forces. Losing the Jinjuriki would be a great toll, let alone the copy ninja and a prodigy of the Uchiha clan. With that being said, this is the end to the first part, which isn't really a part, it's like half a movie. Then once this is uploaded, uh, I will be in the mix of recording slash making the full movie. Uh, if you're watching this as a full movie, uh, and you actually got this far, thank you. If you're watching this normally and you also got this far, also thank you. I know this was a kind of long video, and if you sat through all of it, or even you just happened to be here by happenstance, then, um... Is that even... Yeah, happenstance. <laughs> These are, like, bloopers. You can honestly click off the video right now if you want to. Uh, but yeah, thank you. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe button, share the video to a friend who likes videos, or stay make content in general. With that being said, share the video to a friend who likes videos, or you're watching this still and there are like 20 30 40 maybe even more minutes left of the video uh then just keep on watching make sure to hit the like subscribe button and uh yeah rami x out or rami x here naruto would now engage in combat with the man who stood before him his name tama tama would strength naruto in just about every category that mattered Besides chakra levels, Naruto's chakra levels could not be matched by Tama as well. We all know exactly why. Naruto is both the Jinjuriki of the Nine Tails and an Uzumaki. In this category, that being chakra, Naruto clearly was more dominant. All of Tama's attacks were calculated, whilst Naruto's were more on the rambunctious side and focused on attacking not just one single point of Tama's body, but rather multiple all in one swing. Naruto's fight with Tama would last for three days and three nights. And at this point, Kakashi and Itachi were now tied to stumps. You see, Kakashi and Itachi had been fighting their opponents, but over time they were overwhelmed, which caused them to surrender. Tama, seeing this, would order his men to hold them hostage so that he and Naruto could have a full, uninterrupted battle. Because although Tama was a smart man and knew he could end his fight with Naruto by simply using Itachi and Kakashi as threats, he was also a very prideful man who knew that he cared far too much for battle to let something like that happen and would rather die than lose honor like that. By the start of the fourth morning, Naruto and Tama were both at their limit, but Tama would quickly eat a bowl of medicine that he kept in his ninja pouch, which revitalized him and allowed him to continue to keep up with what seemed like Naruto's limitless amount of chakra. With that being said, this newfound chakra that Tama now had allowed him to blitz Naruto, cutting Naruto with his blade and before Naruto knew it, his hand had been cut clean off. He was now bleeding profusely. It was then that Naruto's eyes widened and he fell on his back, looking up at Tama as his eyes slowly began to close. Tama apologized to Naruto over and over again, telling him that he wouldn't have been able to beat Naruto in a true battle of attrition. Because... Naruto had a near limitless amount of chakra. As Naruto's eyes then fully shut, it would be then that Tama picked up his blade, raising it over what appeared to be Naruto's unconscious, near-dead body. As he slowly began to lower the blade down to kill Naruto, all the while Itachi and Kakashi yelled at him to stop and not to kill Naruto. Stop it, Tama! You know this isn't right. He's just a kid. You think I give a damn if he's just a kid? Tch. The job is unfinished. All Tama knew was that, well, judging off of how strong Naruto already was, and, well, him cutting Naruto's arm clean off, 
would do little to stunt his progress as a young prodigy. And it would probably end up fueling Naruto to get even stronger and try to enact a revenge. Naruto is clearly a generational talent, and so Tama would continue to lower his blade. But before it could touch Naruto, Naruto's body was surrounded by a bubbly orange chakra. This was the chakra of the Nine Tails. Naruto just brokered a deal with the QB so that he could save Itachi and Kakashi and, well, by extension, in some ways, also himself. It would be then that Tama would be hit with a gut punch. This gut punch was strong enough to send Tama to his knees and even knock him out entirely. With that being said, Tama just barely held on to consciousness, as Naruto had no expression on his face. He was happy nor sad, mad nor calm. It would be then that Naruto would watch as Tama slowly thrived in pain. As Naruto then used Tama's own blade to kill him, cutting the blade deep in the side of his body. As he looked to the men who held the two people who raised him captive, Tama's men. And without a second thought, no ifs and no buts, Naruto ripped into all of them, cutting through every last ninja except for a single one, who he only left alive for intel. The people of the hidden, well, the village hidden in strawberries could do nothing but watch. The people who saw this battle take place would later spread this rumor throughout every great nation of the ninja world. They would say that Naruto Uzumaki had reached a monstrous level of power and taken out an entire village by himself to eliminate them as a threat to the hidden leaf village. Even though that wasn't necessarily the truth, the rumors still spread like wildfire. Wild. And this incident would soon be known as the Berry Village Incident. Naruto would cut Itachi and Kakashi from the ropes that had them timed up, and he would also cut the shackles that were attached to their feet. With that, he stood up, creating two shadow clones, which would carry Shisui and Kakashi back to the leaf. Whilst he created another shadow clone, which would gather all of the intel from what was left of the village. And, well, their ninja. And with that, Naruto himself followed his shadow clones back to the Hidden Leaf Village, where they would be greeted as heroes who stopped a battle between the village hidden in berries and the village hidden in the leaves. Although Naruto remembered it much differently. He now no longer had an arm, which caused him, dis well, extreme discomfort, as he spent nearly one month in the hospital getting acclimated to a prosthetic arm and hand which were nowhere near the same as his true limbs. He felt like a shell of himself nearly every single day now. With time, Naruto was able to upgrade his arm to that of a Hashirama arm, per the request of Haruzen Saratobi himself. This would help Naruto and was much better than his old arm. Luckily for Naruto, it was his non-dominant arm, his left to be exact, just like in the canon, actually. So he was much easier able to get back to a normal life. But as soon as Naruto saw Itachi and Kakashi not by his bedside, and instead out training, Naruto went to talk to them, asking when their next mission would be. Before answering, they would ask Naruto if he was okay. Any child going through what Naruto did would cause trauma, and yet Naruto seemed fine. But Naruto replied to their question by clutching his hand. And then clutching his arm. It hurts. Every single day, every single night, I can feel it. The pain of losing my arm. But deeper than that, deeper than the phantom pain that I experience, there is an unrelenting feeling of desperation. I have nightmares almost every night. Where I see myself failing again and again to save you and you. And I let everybody die, so no, I'm not alright. I'm not okay, and I sure as hell I'm not fine.
but this is the life that I wanted. I wanted to be an ombu. I knew what came with the field and the kind of work I would do, the kind of things I would see and the risks I would have to take. The risk of being on an ombu squad, on the front lines, taking the jobs that even the Joni won't take. It's what all ombu carry on their shoulders, a burden bigger than themselves. There's almost nothing you can do against that, no matter how hard you try. I'm Naruto Uzumaki, a member of the Ombu Black Ops, who trained under two of the greatest Ombu to ever live, Itachi Uchiha and Kakashi Hatake. It takes a whole lot more than that to, to stop me. Itachi and Kakashi smiled as they then began training with Naruto once more. We now have a time skip of a few years where Naruto is now 12 years old. Naruto has been in Ombu for three plus years now and even has his own squad. But after a meeting with Itachi and a dangerous mission, he would decide to resign from his position, becoming a regular citizen. But the Leaf had to give him a rank as even though he had resigned from the Ombu, his skill was easily on that of the level of a Jonin and it made no sense for him to, well, be a Genin once more. If not, well, even surpassing that of a Jonin. With that being said, they did give Naruto the rank of, well, just that, a Joni, and gave him two options. He could either join a squad, or he could lead his own squad. Naruto would actually choose in this timeline to join a squad, which just so happened to be Kakashi Hatake's squad, which means that the original Team 7 is still formed in this timeline. Just this time with a much stronger Naruto, a much stronger Sasuke, and a slightly stronger Kakashi. This Sasuke is much stronger because he already has two chakra natures in fire and lightning, and has a variety of jutsu to go along with them. His strength is also, well, superior. And his speed, of course, as well as everything that you can think of, to be honest. Now, after completing several D rank missions, I see no reason why the third Hokage wouldn't give Team 7 a C rank mission to the Land of Waves. It's not as if they're short on ninja in this timeline, as the Uchiha have not been massacred by Itachi. Team 7, who had proven themselves capable enough to complete the bell test and to deal with a variety of D rank missions, would be given a C rank mission to the Land of Waves. With that being said, we will now skip to the second interaction with Sabaza and Haku, as the first showdown goes nearly exactly the same. With that being said, Naruto goes on the fight with Haku with a stronger Sasuke, as Naruto and Sasuke easily give Haku a run for his money, straight from the start. So much of a run that they would easily dispatch of Haku after about 20 minutes of battle. Since in this time, they are quick enough to keep up with Haku, to dodge Haku Senban, and to even, well, hit Haku. It would only take Sasuke and Naruto so long to figure out the jutsu. Sasuke using his two Tomoe Sharingan would allow him to dissect the jutsu, which would aid Naruto, as they would then find a way to hit Haku, eventually beating Haku to a point of near death. As Haku would then find a way, well to stand as well Haku would still end up stepping in the way of Kakashi Shidori to the dismay of Naruto and Sasuke who saw what he was trying to do and tried to stop him but it was to no avail and Haku still ended up dead in Kakashi and Zabuza's bloody arms as Zabuza only had so much life left in him as he would use the full power of the demon of the mist inside of him to dispatch of Gato's goons and Gato himself. With that being said, Zabuza would die beside Haku, as Team 7 would give Zabuza and Haku a proper burial. After finishing the bridge, Kakashi and Naruto sat outside alone, near a river looking up the stars. The Sasuke and Sakura slept little. Did Kakashi and Naruto know, but Sasuke was actually still awake and was listening to their private conversation. 
Nevertheless, they carried on. As usual. It would be here that they talked, and eventually Kakashi would ask if Naruto had grown soft. Have you grown soft, Naruto? I know, it's been months now since the Yondu. Naruto would smile. Well, rather, his smile quickly turned ice cold as he looked at Kakashi, telling Kakashi that it had now been four months since he had been in the Ambu. You know, Kakashi, if Haruzen looked at me with dead cold eyes like I'm looking at you and told me to put the damn mask on again, even if I had to put on the mask again, I wouldn't do so. But it doesn't mean that I've grown soft. Naruto continued. As an Anbu, I was forced to kill. I became the predator. I became the hunter. But now, out here I am the prey. Almost always being the hunted is much easier than being the hunter. Because as the hunter, you can't show weakness or else well, your prey will capitalize on it. But while being, while being the prey, you are almost always showing weakness. And I would rather live a silent truth any and every time before living a loud lie. Everything goes the exact same except for Naruto's fight against Sasuke as we are now skipping to the Chunin exams. And we have now completed the Chunin exams as all I want to say for the Chunin exams is that everything goes normally. Um, where we skip exactly is to Naruto and Sasuke's fight in the Valley of Death. It would be here that Naruto would actually be successful in bringing Sasuke back to the Hidden Leaf Village. Now, the only major difference in Shippuden is that Gar is actually saved by Naruto, so he doesn't ever lose Sh Shikaku the One Tails, and Kakashi is made the Six Hokage just a few days before the Fourth Ninja War. As it would be during this war that Naruto shows the people of the village why he will be the next Hokage of the Leaf, and why he was deserving of such a role. Mastering half of the Nine Tails prior to entering the battlefield. And through the whole war, he would master it all, finally unlocking the Kurama Chakra Mode 1 and 2, as well as, well, his Sage Mode, Kurama Chakra Mode. With that being said, by the end of the battle, Naruto would be crowned one of its heroes, one of the heroes of the war, after defeating Madara and Kaguya, or rather, Kaguya, I don't know why it's, I said it like that. With the help of the reanimated Hokage, Itachi, Sasuke, Kakashi, and even Sakura, the world would finally know true peace as Itachi and Sasuke would not only defeat Kabuto together, but they would kill Zetsu. As in this timeline, Sasuke still has his running on through being a reincarnation of Asura. With that being said, Naruto would be named the seventh Hokage of the Hidden Leaf Village just four years after the war making Naruto one of the youngest Hokage in the history of the village. It would also be around this time that, well, Naruto would truly fall in love with Hinata, as they would eventually get married, having the same family that they did in the canon, with Sasuke still marrying Sakura. I hope you all enjoyed this movie, and although it was a little rushed at the end, I hope it was still very enjoyable. With that being said, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button as it would be deeply appreciated. And although this, this video didn't necessarily get the amount of hype or likes or even views that I would have hoped it got, I'm glad that you all watched this video, even if it wasn't the numbers I wanted. I'm appreciative, and I always will be. Thank you for absolutely everything. Make sure to, well, like and subscribe if I haven't said that already. Share the video to a friend who likes what is. Hmm. Or just anime content in general. Sorry, I had a yawn. And check out the links down below. 
in the description down below are things such as my discord a link to daikage x um various ways of being able to support me like subscribing to the channel directly or even sending me money through paypal which helps obviously with the production of these videos and allows me to get them out much quicker and with that being said i yeah rami x